Hey, Chris Salim here from Mixdown Online and the Produce Like a Pro. And today I want to show you the vocal thickening trick in Cubase. So the vocal thickening trick, you've probably heard of that one before. Warren did a video a while back using Pro Tools and Doubler from Waves. And David Mood did the same thing in Studio One. Now, today I'm going to look into this technique in Cubase. I'm not going to lie to you, this one is going to look a lot like what David did in Studio One. Studio One and Cubase are like cousins, in my opinion. They look alike. But if you're a Cubase user, you will enjoy this one. So the idea behind the vocal thickening trick is to add some width and thickness to your vocal sound. Um, a bit like a choir. When we listen to a choir, what we get is a very large sound. Um, and why is that? It's basically because when you get a bunch of people singing the same lines together, we're going to end up with some variations and some imperfections within each other, which is going to create a natural chorus. And this is why you're going to get a huge sound, okay? They're not going to be 100% in sync within each other, timing-wise, and even the pitch, you know? The pitch is slightly going to be different within each other. And again, that creates some imperfections and some variations. So um, in Cubase, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to apply the same, the same logic, okay, uh, that we see with a choir. I'm going to apply this to my lead vocal track. Okay, so first I'm going to create eight mono tracks. I'm going to call them Voc. And I'm going to select them all. Go into my mix console, right click on the tracks. And to create a group channel track. Okay, so it's going to be stereo this time. I'm going to call this one Doubler. And I'm going to send the output to my uh, mix Voc bus. There you go. I'm going to go back here and uh, bring that doubler bus track up here. Okay, so all these mono tracks are routed into this doubler um, group track. Now, what we're going to do next is to, uh, to pan all the tracks left and right. Okay, so I'm going to pan the first one left, second one right, and so on. Perfect. Now we're going to copy the main track here to the first one. I'm going to make sure my algorithm right here on top is at standard vocal. Okay, so there's a lot of all different algorithms here in Cubase. Uh, just, just select the standard vocals, which is best for uh, the, the kind of work we're going to do here. Um, now I'm going to copy uh, this event into all of these tracks. Okay, to make sure I have eight copies of the same event. And next, we are going to work on the pitch. So we are going to pitch shift these events. Now, if we select the first one, look on top here. We have different options, and one is called fine tunes. And now in the Warren's video, uh, Warren pitch shifted um, his uh, events by three cents, six, nine, and 12 cents sharp and flat okay so uh, we're going to do the same so we're going to pitch shift the first event by three cents which is very very tiny and the second one by minus three cents now the next one okay uh, we're going to pitch shift it to minus six okay we're going to switch things around and the reason is very simple. All of our tracks are panned left and right. So we don't want to end up with all the, uh, uh, the flat uh, pitch shifting on one side and the sharp pitch shifting on the other side. Okay, we want to make sure uh, these are all blend together and well balanced. That's why my first is at three second minus three. And the third one is at minus six. And then track number four at six. Now, uh, five at nine, minus nine, minus 12, and 12. There you go. So now everything has been pitch shifted. Next, we're going to need to uh, delay all these events, okay, just by a few milliseconds. Um, now, in Warren's video, um, the doubler, the waves doubler, um, was at around 9 milliseconds on one side and 23 something milliseconds on the other side, I believe. Uh, so we're going to keep the same settings. Now you can use uh, the amount of milliseconds you want, but try not to go too low 
okay, not to get into some calm filtering effect and don't go too high, you know, because you don't want to hear the actual delay. So you want to keep that subtle. Um, so I'm going to use 10 milliseconds and 24 milliseconds. Okay, so now if we look here, okay, if you select the first track, uh, look on the left side, we have the inspector section in Cubase. And like in Studio One, we can delay the track. So this is exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to delay this one by 10 milliseconds. And then I'm going to go down to the second one and delay this one by 24 milliseconds. Now, second time around, I'm going to do the same as I did with pitch shifting. I'm going to switch things around. So 24 and 10. Same thing here, 10 and 24. And there you go. Um, everything is set up. Now we're going to listen to the song we have. I am not using the same song as Warren and David did. I'm using a song I worked on a few years ago. So it's a female vocalist this time. Uh, so it's going to give us a different perspective. So let's try this out. I'm just going to solo what we did. All right, so this is what it sounds like on its own. Now uh, we're going to listen to the song itself. All right, so I'm just going to solo this, okay? I'm going to solo the lead vocal and the doubler effect. But first, what we're going to do, I'm going to bypass the send effects out of the lead vocal and listen to it dry. That's pretty cool. So if we add the send effects to the lead vocal, and you know what? I'm going to copy the same effects on my doubler bus here. And same for the inserts. You don't have to do this, but this is something I like to do to start with. All right, cool. Now, if you add too much, though, it's going to sound like a special effect, and there's nothing wrong with that if that is what you're looking for. Now, you can also add some automation. Nothing stops you on adding a bit more of that effect into the choruses, for example, and a bit less in the verses. Stuff like that can easily be done with automation. So this is basically it for the vocal thickening trick in Cubase. Now, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section down below. And don't forget to like and to share this video if you enjoyed it and to subscribe to the Produce Like a Pro channel if you're not already. All right, so take care and I'll see you next time.